dad, a religious guy. And he look, he was looking through the Bible or one night, and he came up with me, or he came up to me, and he brought the idea of this name because uh, we wanted to start a band together. And it was from the hymn uh, "Abide with Me." Abide it? with me, which is a funeral hymn. It's a funeral hymn, and me and him just change it to one letter of it or one word of it, and uh, change it to "Abide by Me," and it's been that ever since. Wow. That's um, but now that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, I have to say, I mean, most most there are bands out there that actually get their names from like the church and religious beliefs, and uh, I have to say, you pull it off pretty good. Um, if you could tell me, I mean, you know, tell me like your biggest influences. If you had to choose like um, one or two or three, you know. Um, probably a big influence for me would be uh, Nikki Six. Um, he plays bass for a band called Motley Crue. Um, We're all familiar with just, those guys. Yeah, <laughs> he's just uh, I, I like his role model. You know, um, his past he's had is kind of rough, and he's gone through a lot of stuff. And as I recall, he was briefly dead before he got revived. Yeah, that's true. So actually, the same thing happened to Paul Anselmo back in '96. Yeah. So usually him. Then um, for guitar, probably Don Bag Daryl. He played you know, a guitar in a band called Pantera. And uh, rest in peace, he's not here, but uh, I think he's just a big influence on me. I think uh, for vocals, some of my biggest influences are Danny from Asking Alexandria, uh, Holly Sykes, Bring Me the Horizon, and I'd probably have to say Burt McCracken from The Used. Oh, yes, The Used. <laughs> Those, they're an interesting band. Yeah, they I got booted off of this, though, a couple yeah. years back. You can remember. It's interesting. Um, I'd like to say that my biggest influence in the music scene is Matt Wentworth from Our Last Night. He plays guitar and sings. Um, I find him to be amazingly technical while also maintaining like a steady singing voice when he performs live. Um, I, I don't really have like a huge bass influence, but I really do like technicality when it comes to bass and guitar because I play guitar also so um, I like August Burns Red they're pretty technical I guess August Burns awesome Red awesome band yeah August Burns Red and Our Last Night are probably two of my biggest influences I guess it ties in with me uh, August Burns Red the drummer is my biggest influence in like the hardcore scene <laughs> we um, let the dogs out <laughs> <laughs> Actually, some, that's of you, good background some of you may not know for the record they're getting interviewed later, but they're kind of our team band, and I like that because that's how August Burns Red and a band called Texas and Goli are. And I guess Matt Griner, as a drummer, Matt Griner, uh, and Adam Gray from Texas and Goli, so that's pretty much it. Yeah, though, very good influences, guys, I must say. I mean, you know, you do know how to tie in both metal and hardcore yeah. pretty good together. Most hardcore bands uh, out there nowadays, like, they'll barely acknowledge metal, but you guys acknowledge it very well. That's, 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 that's what I like, you know? I mean, we should be brothers, not rivals. Yeah, that's what yeah, I always say. Competition. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, now, what makes you most happy about today's metal slash hardcore scene? I mean, you know, because there's lots of, lots of bands out there nowadays, and, you know, what makes you the most happy, you know, in terms of like, like what the scene's about and uh, what's been coming out since, oh, say, like, 92? Uh, I like the fact that lots of the bands just like kind of work together at shows, like, if someone breaks a drumstick or a guitar string, like what happened with our last show, and, and, uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. another band will just help us out, they'll pass us a guitar, throw us a pair of drumsticks, and how, when we were missing uh, our other guitarist, John, we had, uh, uh, the guitarist from the band Jason Taylor fill in for him, and we also had Tyler from For the Record fill in for his vocals, and it was just a bunch of teamwork, and that's what I really like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you want to say something? Oh, uh, sure. I was going to say, like, there's a lot of friends kind of uh, within it, too. If it's just like using someone's guitar, like you said, uh, string snapping or setting up amps or letting you use amps, I mean, it's a big. Um, it's a big thing to do, and it's nice to have kind of people and friends there for you to kind of hug you back up a little bit. Yeah. Um, pretty much. Okay. All right.
Now, obviously there would be disappointments in this whole scene, so what would disappoint you like the most right now? Because, you know, obviously, there's like a few bands that have like, you know, tried to go mainstream all They're because of... Out. Yeah. Out. Most bands have done that nowadays. Yeah. They would have never expected to. So. Bring me their heads and went from super metal... 18 Visions, let's not forget those guys. Yeah. Or... Yeah, I don't know, I just... I don't really like the fact that some bands just try to compete and be like the more, like... Uh, We're better than you kind yeah, of guys. Yeah, like they kind of act like they're like... Really all arrogant. Bands, like, yeah, like don't pay just, attention to their fans. Let me yeah. just say that no band is better than any band. They're all good, and we should develop the mentality and like say, why can't we all just get along, folks, huh? Yeah. We shouldn't be competing with one another. You want to do that? Join a rival gang. Yeah. <laughs> But, but yeah, that, that's good insight there. Now, now tell us something your fans might not know about the band, and that would most likely surprise them. <laughs> um, every time we practice, or we're all just hanging out over for a show, we spend all of our money at McDonald's and, and it gorge, shows. gorge ourselves. Yeah. Is Ronald McDonald gonna make an appearance, by the way? <laughs> should. We should. We should have a music video amazing. with Ronald McDonald yeah. in it. That would really be so awesome. Yeah, that would. Every They've day, actually, just to give me a free burger, I'd be happy. <laughs> They've actually come as long as the house. Hamburglar doesn't Ooh. come around. No, I'm here. talking about you guys. Oh, my house and come to my James. <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> taking down the James <laughs> jar. Or, Digging through the car. No, no, my car is just so bad. I, I have like, eight, I have like ten dollars in there. Next day, I have like none. Yeah, just so much change. So, we're McDonald's addicts. We're what Supersize calls me heavy users. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that they'll they'll overindulge in McDonald's or any other fast food, like Wendy's. Yeah. Or Burger King, but that's beside the point here. This is not an interview about restaurants. So. <laughs> We're gonna get off that now while we still can. All right. Um, now, basically, um, wrapping this up, you know, what can people expect from your shows and or records? Because I know, like, you guys have played a lot of shows and whatnot. And um, according to what I what I understand, I mean, I don't know. I mean, in your own words, describe what they can ex expect. Well, even if we're not, shows. yeah, even if we're not doing our best on stage, we do our best to like tear up the stage and give some good stage presence. We like to get uh, some big hits going. So you're like one of those bands that, you know, like on some nights,